systolic versus diastolic is something that you have to understand not only for the left and right heart, but also from cardiac output and ejection fraction point of view. So, let us look at that mathematically as well, because this is something that is going to appear in your exams plus in your um, lab exam, uh, lab findings. So, look, let us make a normal ventricle here. So, this is a ventricle, this is normal ventricle and let us say the way this ventricle is working is that blood comes in to the ventricle, it fills up up to a particular amount. So, that is the end diastolic volume, that is the amount of blood that is present in the ventricle at the end of the diastole. This is the amount of blood on which the heart is going to work to eject it. Then this ventricle is going to eject that blood, it is going to squeeze and go in a systole. So, let us say the ventricle now squeezes, it has squeezed to allow that blood or part of that blood to be ejected in the aorta, aorta we are talking the left side. So, let us say this is that blood that is just ejected and of course, there is some blood that would still be left in the ventricle after the ejection that is the end systolic volume. Now, what is the stroke volume? Stroke volume equals stroke volume equals end diastolic volume that is the original volume we started with minus end systolic volume that is the volume we are left with and if you subtract them. So, let us say here it was 120 milliliters what we got out was let us say 60 milliliters sorry what we are left with after the ejection happened is 60 milliliter. So, how much blood went out 120 minus 60 equals 60 milliliters is left. Now, what is ejection fraction? So, look I am not doing a big lecture here with these because we have done separate complete lectures discussing the stroke volumes and diastolic volumes, systolic volume and ejection fraction. I am just using enough to make a point about systolic and diastolic dysfunction. So, now let us say ejection fraction of this heart. Ejection fraction is the percentage of the blood that is ejected from the heart when it went in a systole. So, how do we know that percentage? What we need to know is what is the total blood that was present when the heart started squeezing and, and the amount of blood that left if you divide that by the total blood that would give you the ejection fraction. So, that means stroke volume divided by end diastolic volume. Stroke volume divided by end diastolic volume is going to give us ejection fraction. How do we get the stroke volume? We have end diastolic volume minus end systolic volume. So, in this particular case we put 60 milliliters divided by 120 milliliters and that comes to be 50 percent. Of course, I made it easy for myself to do quick math here on the board. Normally, the heart's ejection fraction, a healthy person's heart ejection fraction is above 55 percent. In athletes and in people who do exercises, ejection fraction can go up normally when they are exercising up to 80 to 90 percent. So, that is the ejection fraction. What is the definition of ejection fraction? Percentage of the blood ejected from the heart in one stroke out of the, the it is the percentage. Okay. Now, let us look at the systolic dysfunction. Systolic dysfunction means when the heart was squeezing, it was not able to eject properly. So, of course, the cardiac output is reduced. That is why we have a problem. Heart is failing. It cannot nourish the these tissues. So, let us see what systolic dysfunction will mean. Here we have a heart, this heart has some blood, let us use 120 milliliters same as the normal. So, there is 120 milliliters blood present in it, heart undergoes the systole and heart is damaged this heart is damaged for some reason. For example, there is ischemic heart disease 
or there is so there is ischemia of the heart, ischemic damage, or there is infarctive damage. So this heart is damaged. So the amount of blood it ejected now instead of let us say in this normal heart 60 milliliter was left this time what is left is let us say 80 milliliters and systolic volume. So how much is what is the stroke volume then you subtract 120 and 80 80 from 120 40 milliliters. So 40 milliliters is ejected. Now the 40 milliliter ejection out of 120, so what do you do is you get the ejection fraction by dividing 40 and 120, so that is one third 33 percent. So is that a good ejection fraction? No. Is that good output? You may just looking at the output you might say yeah it sounds fine, but it really depends what percentage of the blood went out that tells you what was the blood to work on and did heart performed well. So no this heart did not perform well this was 33 percent ejection this is called systolic dysfunction. Now diastolic dysfunction means systole is happening ok but there is some problem with the diastolic function so let us look at that let us say the heart which has diastolic dysfunction that heart is a little larger dilated. Now in this heart the blood that is present is 240 milliliter, I am exaggerating again for my own need. So let us say the blood that is present in there is actually let us make it 200 milliliters, how much came out 60 over there, um, let us make it 140 milliliter just to make it easy for me, this 140 milliliters the blood when the heart now went into the systole of course there was a lots of blood so it could not eject that all the end systolic volume now is let us say 90 milliliters so that is the blood that is left here so how much of the blood is ejected you separate you subtract them 140, 90, minus 140, 50 milliliters of the blood is ejected. So, 50 milliliter is ejected. Now, what you do is you take the ejection fraction that is 50 divided by 140 and that gives you one third and one fourth. Normally, what would happen is let me let me correct it the way it should be for, for this one. So, instead of 90, let us say 60. That means about 80 ml went out. So, if you do the 80 ml and here 80 ml it is even more than 50 percent. The point is this in the diastolic dysfunction there may be more blood present and relatively good amount of blood that is getting out or there may be less blood present for example in hypertrophied heart which is thick and let us make that one here here this is a thick heart it has a small lumen the cavity is small so the amount of blood in here is less so let us say it can only contain 80 ml because the cavity size is small because the ventricle has become hypertrophied. Now when it contracts let us say it ejects it is left with the end systolic volume is 40 ml. How much is ejected 50 percent? Now here the cardiac output is below normal and the ejection fraction is normal this heart is suffering this heart is failing with the normal or above normal ejection fraction. So that is what I want you to take away that in the diastolic dysfunction ejection fraction is normal or above normal however cardiac output is low because there is not enough blood in the heart or there is so much blood that heart cannot pump out. Actually you know what this one is an example of systolic dysfunction. 
systolic. This is diastolic. So, I do not want you to create an incorrect concept here. Systolic, when heart cannot eject properly, that is a systolic dysfunction. When heart ejects properly, but there is not enough blood to eject, that is a diastolic dysfunction and that this is the example of the diastolic dysfunction. Okay.